Everything we're talking about, Bob, right now is based on longevity. And that's very different than if you were asking this question through the lens of performance. Does that point kind of make sense or should I expand on that a bit? Yeah, I think you should expand a little bit, maybe on the performance, health and longevity, particularly performance and longevity and the possible trade-off between the two. If someone said to me, Peter, my goal is to break two hours and 40 minutes on the Chicago Marathon next year, I would be talking about this in a totally different manner. That is a very difficult performance goal. And that requires training at an energy system that I'm not even really going to talk about in the context of longevity. If someone says, I want to break 10 hours on the Ironman, if someone says, I want to deadlift three and a half times my body weight, if you start to really look into the far recesses of amazing physical performance, everything I'm saying needs to be modified. And I'm not going to talk about what those things look like. What I will say is they are generally not collinear with longevity. And at times they can be outright orthogonal. And I realize as that's coming out of my mouth, it sounds pretty freaking stupid if you're not a math person. So let me explain what that means in English. Something is collinear when it's directly in line with, something is orthogonal when it is completely at odds with or at 90 degrees to. So trying to run the fastest 10K is training at an energy system that is very demanding of the cardiovascular system. It is pretty much maximum cardiac output just beneath VO2 max, above functional threshold. It puts an amazing strain on the body. And frankly, while doing that is better than sitting on a couch all day, that is generally past the point of optimizing longevity returns. And it actually comes at some longevity cost relative to something more at a slightly lower energy system. So everything I'm talking about is geared towards this centenarian Olympics, which we've talked about in the past, this idea of being the most kick-ass 90 year old possible. And that's really based on two energy systems. So it's got the stability and the strength piece we talked about. And then it's got this low end aerobic energy system, which is zone two that we'll talk about in a second. And then I think it's punctuated with brief bursts of generally zone five. And the reason I think those two matter is that's generally where life takes place. Life is zone one, zone two, and zone five. And so by training zone two and zone five, obviously much more in zone two than zone five, we're really teeing ourselves up metabolically and also structurally to do these things. Yeah.